Good morning, church family, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service for the Myrtle Beach Church of Christ. Hopefully by now you've heard that we have plans to return in two weeks to our worship service building our church. And if you didn't get uh, an email with all the details on what we're going to be doing to keep everybody as safe as possible, including two separate services, lots of social distancing, please get in touch with your zone leader. We have a few announcements for today. Let's get started with those. David Carr doing well after his surgery. Please continue to keep him in your prayers. Jesse Chunasing is under a doctor's care for severe head pain. Rick Klontz, Steve Hardwick still dealing with his shoulder injury. Sadie Hip and her daughter-in-law Bunny. Ernie Leonard had successful surgery on Tuesday. O.T. and Lavinia Martin. Jenny Rojas. Dolores and Eddie Scott. Billy Stevens. We have shut-ins that are listed in our bulletins. Please include them in our prayers. And our expected mothers, who are also listed in our bulletin. We would like to extend sympathy to Bernie and Blanche Bellamy. They've lost two family members this week, Virginia Livingston and Wilbert Dozier. Please keep Bernie and Blanche in your prayers. There's going to be an Elders and Deacons online meeting on Sunday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. And ladies, Blanche is going to be presenting a devotional to the ladies in Zoom this Wednesday from 1 until 1.30 p.m. See your emailed invite, or if you didn't get one, contact Cindy. And Blanche says, have your Bible ready. And parents, teachers are providing a live interactive children's Bible class via Zoom Sunday at 5 p.m. If you're not getting an email Zoom, contact Michael. And again, if you need help in any way, please contact your Zoom leaders. Let's begin with prayer. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for this opportunity to worship here together online. And as we prepare for this time of worship, Father, we ask that you clear our mind of all worldly thoughts so we can truly focus on hearing the message, getting a better understanding of your word and of your love for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's sing 892, the steadfast love of the Lord. 892. Mm -hmm. The steadfast love the of the Lord never the Lord ceases. ceases. His mercies never, His come, mercies to never an come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in Him. The steadfast love the of the steadfast Lord, never, the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come His to an end. Never come to an end. They, they are new every morning. morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore I will hope in Him. Therefore I will hope in Him. Let's sing 717, Victory in Jesus. 717. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how He gave His life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about His groaning, of His precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. I then obeyed his blessed command and gained the victory. 
Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day that you've given us. Father, thank you for allowing us this medium, this, this internet, that we can fellowship, if not physically, at least we can fellowship together spiritually. Father, we love you and we praise you and, and we ask that you be with us as we worship and to do it in spirit and in truth. Father, we ask that you be with those that are sick and afflicted. And Father, we ask that you take this pandemic from our land. But most importantly, Father, that you take away the spirit of fear that has afflicted so many people. Because, Father, you have not given us a spirit of fear. Father, give us hope and strength. And let us always remember we can do everything because with God, anything is possible. And, Father, we love you and we praise you. Be with us. Keep us strong. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today will come from Ephesians 1, verses 3, and it reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Our second verse will come from Joshua 1, verses 7 and 9, and it reads, only to be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper, where, prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in, meditate in it day and night that you may observe it for observe to do it according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I commanded you? Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Hello, friends, and good morning, church family. We're so glad to have all of you with us for this virtual worship assembly, and we hope and pray that when you're able to come see us. We do plan to reopen in a physical worship at the building on the last day of this month of May, the last Sunday, May 31st. If you're in our area, we invite you to come. If you are out of our area, every week we will continue to show this worship service online so you can remain worshiping with us indefinitely. We'd love to have you. We're involved in a year-long sermon series called Spiritual 2020 Vision, Seeing Life from God's Perspective. And the idea is we've been looking at these different books of the Bible. We were in the book of Joshua, and Joshua is that book of victory. And in the book of Joshua, I mentioned to you last time that the book of Ephesians is the spiritual application, the spiritual concepts of the physical we find in Joshua. So I thought about that, and putting those two books together, we have a wonderful concept of true success. That's why I call this lesson the seven steps of 
spiritually successful people. We all want to be successful. And the most important avenue is our spiritual lives. So get ready. Here we go for this wonderful concept. The first one is the methodology or the method, and it is recruiting. If you think about it for a minute, Hebrews chapter 10, when God the Father was talking to God the Son and God the Holy Spirit about making us in their own image and then having the ability then to be free moral agents and choose right from wrong, that we would eventually choose the wrong. And God the Father said, the blood of bulls and goats won't take away sin. I need a man, a God-man. And Christ volunteered to come and shed his blood on the cross for all of our sins. In a sense, God recruited Jesus. And then when deity in the burning bush challenged Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go, God, through Moses, through the plagues, with his mighty hand and outstretched arm, with Moses, led the children of Israel out of Egypt, the Exodus. And because of that, we can see that God recruited Moses. And then in Exodus 33, verse 11, the Bible says Moses is a man who talked to God face to face. And then the very same verse says, and Joshua attached himself to Moses. So Moses recruited Joshua. And then Joshua, in turn, recruited Rahab through God's providence, through the spies. So she changed from a Jerichoite to an Israelite. Jesus recruited the apostles in John chapter 1. In fact, John the Baptist, after baptizing Jesus the former day, at Christ's request for our example, the next day John says, Behold, the Lamb of God takes away the sin of the world. He was pointing his recruits to follow Jesus. And two of them, John and Andrew, did. And then Andrew went and recruited his own brother, Peter. And Christ called Philip. And the last apostle recruited, Jesus did, after his death, when he appeared to Saul in Acts chapter 9. And then he became the apostle Paul. And Paul recruited many. He was a great recruiter in the Bible. In 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2, Paul told one of his recruits, Timothy, the things I committed to you, Commit thou to faithful men who will teach others also. And all of us as Christians are commanded in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Christ said, all power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Here's our commander in chief. You go and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you teach them to observe all I commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way, even into the world. And by that recruiting concept, the Christians of the first century did. In Acts 16 and verse 5, the Bible says, And the church was strengthened and increased in number daily. Recruiting is essential and crucial in our seven steps to spiritual success. The second step is our mindset, recognizing and responding. Christ said in John chapter 10, He was the good shepherd, and the sheep knew him, they would not follow anyone else, only his voice. It's recognizing him and responding to him. And we find that in the book of Joshua and Ephesians. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 1, God tells Joshua, As I was with Moses, so I am with you. Go. He's the God of Moses, he's the God of Joshua, and Joshua recognized that. In Ephesians 1, verses 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul begins the Ephesian letter by saying, I'm an apostle by Jesus Christ. You are all, as I am, saints by Jesus Christ, recognizing his authority, recognizing the fact that they are to follow him. And that is responding to him in submission. In Joshua chapter 1, 10 through 18, Joshua then being told, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid or dismayed. The Lord thy God with you wherever you go. If you do, you'll be a great success. Goes out and recruits those other Israelites to get ready to cross the Jordan River and take the promised land. In Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 23, we see the spiritual application of that. If you have your Bible open there, let's read together. Ephesians 1, 15 to 23. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks of you, making mention of you in my prayers, 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Have you noticed that? Verse 15, you have faith and love. Verse 18, you have the hope. That you might see and understand the recruiting that happened in your life. And what is the exceeding greatness and power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. He's the authority. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that's named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet, even to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of of him that filleth all in all. If we submit to him, we have everything, all the spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus by a mindset of recognizing and responding. Our third concept is the metamorphosis. It happens as a result, the raising in our lives. The New Testament baptism is like the caterpillar turning into a butterfly, a metamorphosis. We see that in Joshua and Ephesians. In Joshua's chapter 2 through 6, we see how these Moses and Joshua were involved in leadership. For instance, Moses in 1 Corinthians 10 verses 1 and 2, when he led his first generation across the Red Sea on dry land, the Bible says that God saw that as a baptism type shadow. As you were baptized under Moses, under the cloud and in the sea. When Joshua led those across the Jordan River, the second generation, he said, I'm going to raise you in the eyes of the people as I did with Moses at the Red Sea, I do at the Jordan River. And they realized this concept and saw the raising. Even Jesus himself was baptized in that Jordan River, raising out of that concept, the raising. And it really comes clear in Paul and the Christians. Saul of Tarsus mentioned in Acts chapter 9 was told to go to Damascus. He told you what you must do. Three days later, after he prayed and he fasted, a preacher came to him. A lot of preachers in the denominational world would say, you're already saved. You've been praying and fasting. But he wasn't. The preacher said to him, what are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. In that watery grave, you rise to walk in the newness of life. Romans 6 and verse 4. Now look at here at Ephesians chapter 2. Why do we have to be baptized? He reminds us here. And you hath he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sin. Sin is death in our lives. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. It reminds me of the first generation that Moses had to follow and lead. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, where he loved us, even we were dead in sin, hath he made alive us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. We're raised to walk in the newness of life. The baptismal process is by the grace of God. We simply obey it and receive it. And hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Then the ages to come, we might show the exceeding riches of his grace and the kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. It's all about Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of meritorious works is the idea, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God foreordained we should walk in them. And so this metamorphosis that happens in our lives, we are raised to live and to act like raised people, the resurrection life. The fourth concept is the mood. It's all about rejoicing. In fact, that Ethiopian eunuch, when he was baptized into Christ, Acts 8 verse 39, went on his way rejoicing. That rejoicing mood is in Joshua and Ephesians as well. When Moses, way back in Exodus, when he led those 
children of Israel across the Red Sea on dry land. On the other side, chapter 15, the first thing they did was sing the song of Moses and rejoice before God. When Joshua led those people across the Jordan on dry land, they then camped at Gilgal with those stones they collected in the middle of that river. And that was a place throughout the history there, was a place they would come together. It was their a place of worship. It was their place of remembering what God had done for them. Rahab. Remember how she was, again, a harlot. But by obedience of faith, she became an heiress of salvation. She and her family were the only Jordan or Jerichoites to come out of that city alive. And as we saw, she married into the very Israelite family and in the lineage of Christ. And New Testament Christians have the same kind of idea. Look at Ephesians 2 and verse 11. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past, before you were baptized, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called the uncircumcision, but that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, he writes to the Colossians in chapter 2 and calls baptism the circumcision not made with hands. At all that or time past, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world, dead in the water. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. That blood in that water washes away your sins. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. We've had the circumcision not made with hands. And by doing that, the Lord broke down that wall, just like Jericho's wall. We saw, when Jesus many years later saw the new Jericho, he broke down that wall of prejudice. We said, Zacchaeus, come down, I'm going to your house today. Rahab, who was a harlot, became an heiress of the wonderful kingdom of God. It's breaking down that wall between Jew and Gentile. And then he says in verse 15, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the hatred, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself one new man, the two, one new man, so making peace. So here's the idea. We have been circumcised in Christ through baptism. We are now broken down the wall between Jew and Gentile and us. And we now can be one, is the idea. It is that rejoicing. We're all one in Christ Jesus. The eunuch in Acts 8.39 went on his way rejoicing. And Paul, Philippians 4.13 says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. The fifth concept is the motive. It's rededicating ourselves to the Christ. The Bible says we do that every day. In 1 John 1 and verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We see this rededicating in Joshua. Chapter 3 and verse 5, Joshua says, I want you to sanctify yourselves. In chapter 5, verses 1 through 9, he has them circumcised physically. In Ephesians chapters 3 through 5, we see the same thing. The idea in chapter 3 is they're called to be sanctified. He talks about how we are now one in Christ, no longer Jew and Gentile. In Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about being sanctified in him now. And he says that no longer, he says, verse 25, Wherefore, putting away, lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. That him that stole, steal no more. Or rather, working with his hands. We've changed lives. We're now a sanctified people. And we are justified. Chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us, hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. You see, the applications are tremendous. And then the memorial, remembering. Memorial Day is next week, where we remember those who gave their lives for us. It's been said people don't learn from their history are doomed to repeat it. We have a memorial every Lord's Day, the communion. And remembering is such an essential part of this process 
of being spiritually successful. Joshua understood that. In Joshua chapter 5, verses 10 to 15, he, by God's instructions, reinstated the Passover for them to observe. You remember back in Egypt when the, the Lord passed over the house of those that had the blood of the Lamb and killed the firstborn of the Egyptians. The Passover feast became so essential that throughout the Hebrews' history, it still is. It's an important feast in their remembrance. In Ephesians chapter 5, in verse 19, he talks about also we remembering in our worship to God. He says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making the melody in your heart to the Lord. We sing a cappella, teaching one another in that process. We pray one for another. We have the sermon. We hear God's word together. We take the Lord's Supper together. And that Lord's Supper is a type and shadow of that Passover meal. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he comes. It was that Passover bread and fruit of the vine that he first instituted the Lord's Supper, not of his betrayal. So we see this remembering, this memorial concept, and then the giving of our first and best to God. So when we look at these two scriptures together, we're seeing an idea of worship. Also, relationship. In Joshua chapter 5, 13 to 15, Joshua sees this figure. He said, you for us are against us. It was a, looked like an army general. And he was the Lord himself, the Lord of hosts. And Joshua fell on his face and worshipped him. This is our relationship to the Lord. He is God and we're not. And his leadership in our lives. And the submission that Joshua showed by falling on his face to God. When we worship God in spirit and in truth, we have that relationship with him in our everyday lives as well. Ephesians 5.21 says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And it talked about the other relationship that is compared here to our relationship with God. That's the marital relationship. And that relationship, the wives submit to the husbands and the Lord. The husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church, submitting to him in every way. In chapter 6, the children submitting to the parents. In chapter 6, the idea of employers submitting to the employer God as they serve as employee. And then employees submitting to the employer as they serve the employer, the Lord. It's all about leadership and submission. See how this works so beautifully together? And then finally the march, the re-enlisting of ourselves to God. Joshua and Old Testament Israel were called to re-enlist when they had the instructions in chapter 6 of Joshua. I want you to take this city, and I'm sure Joshua said, okay, we're going to have the battering ram at the gate, and we're going to climb the walls, are we going to circle around them and just besiege them until they starve them out? No. You're going to walk around the walls one time each day for six days. On the seventh day, seven times, you're going to blow the trumpet and shout, and the walls are going to come down. Would you believe that? Joshua did. And he re-upped the people. We're going to march for the Lord. We're going to follow his instructions. So in Hebrews 11 and verse 30, very interesting, it says, And the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. In Revelation 2 and verse 10, Be thou faithful unto death, and you shall receive the crown of life. In Joshua 24 and verse 15, You choose just this, this day whom you're going to serve who you're going to re-up with. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And Paul and New Testament Christians are the same way. Paul was told, and he told the Ephesian church, Ephesians 6 and verse 10, to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God to be able to fight against the wiles of the devil. When you and I each day wake up, we put on the whole armor of God. We put that belt of truth supports the entire spiritual system in our lives. And then the breastplate of right living, we live it out in our daily lives, and it protects our heart. Our heart is in the Lord. 
The feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. With our feet, we take the gospel to others. We march for the Lord. We have that shield of faith to fight off the fiery darts of the wicked one. We have that helmet of salvation. It reminds us, it encases our mind. Keep our mind in heaven, in the Lord, in salvation. We have the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Thus saith the Lord. It is written. That sword that's so sharp, it can separate the bone from the marrow and the intents of the heart. It is that very sword is the instrument that we use to help fight this battle in the Lord. And then we have the prayer concept. He says, pray in verse 18. Prayer warriors, and we might be successful. And so the seven steps of spiritually successful people are simple. It's the method of recruiting. Recruiting. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2, the things I committed to you, commit to faithful men who will teach others also. That's our calling. Our mindset is we recognize he's the authority, and we're going to respond to his commands. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 3 and verse 10, young Samuel said, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. He's Lord. I'm servant, I'll follow. And then the metamorphosis that happens in our life, we obey the gospel, we're raised to walk in a newness of life. Colossians 2, 12 says we are buried with him in baptism. But Colossians 3, 1 says we are raised with Christ. If you've been raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Request us upon the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. The raising. And then the mood is rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4.13. And the motive is rededicating ourselves to the Lord. Every day, 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then remembering. Remembering in our everyday life the Lord. On the first day of the week, remembering him through the communion, remembering that he is God and we're not. And then the march is re-enlisting every day in the army of the Lord. Does it work? Is Is it really seven steps to spiritual successfulness? Oh, yes. What about Moses? Was he successful? Moses, who led those people for 40 years. In fact, the law is called the law of Moses that God gave him. When we get to heaven, we're going to sing the song of Moses and the Lamb, the two great deliverers, Old Testament and New Testament. Oh, yes, he was successful. And he's in Hebrews chapter 11, face Hall of Fame. What about Joshua? Again, he's in chapter 11 of Hebrews, face Hall of Fame. What about Rahab? James 2, 24 to 26. When God talks about saving faith, obedient faith, uses Rahab as an example of it. We talk about Paul as being successful. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is, lay it for me, a crown of righteousness, which the righteous judge shall give me in that day. But not to me only, but to all them that love his appearing, all other successful people spiritually in the Lord. What about the New Testament Christians? Were they successful? The Bible says in Acts 16 and verse 5 that the church was strengthened and they increased in number daily. In chapter 17 and verse 6 it says, the enemies of the gospel says these people who have turned the world upside down have come here also. Oh, yes. So one more time. Get in our minds now. We want to be spiritually successful. Have you been recruited in the Lord? Has someone shared the gospel with you? Let me share it with you really quickly. Here it is. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, John 8 and verse 24. If you're willing to change your heart and life, repent, Luke 13 and verse 3. Confess him before men that he's the Son of God, Matthew 10 and verse 32. 
and be baptized, have your sins washed away. Acts 22, 16. You are now in the army of the Lord. You've been recruited. And you've been recruited to recruit others. Now, if you haven't done that, you can do so today. Just give us a call. Let us help you be baptized today to have your sins washed away. And become a recruiter for the Lord. If your mindset is right, you have to recognize that he's Lord and you're not. To respond to his call and not what you think is right, but what he says is right. And when you do, I think about, again, Samuel saying, Speak, Lord, thy servant is hearing. And then the, the idea of the metamorphosis, raising from that watery grave to walk in a newness of life. You don't do that until you do. But when you do, you have a whole new life. You've been born again of water and spirit. Acts 2.38, baptized into Christ, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So no wonder you're rejoicing. Christians should be the most rejoicing people on the earth. People ask us why we are so rejoicing. Because we have a good news gospel we can share with you, and you can be free. And then the motive, again, is rededicating. If you've been baptized in the Christ, but you've not been living the life, you can rededicate yourself today with you and your God. But if you need the prayers of the congregation, James 5.16 says the prayer of righteous people avail much, give us a call. We'll pray with you and for you to get right with God today. And then the memorial, remembering him in your life. That's why we don't forsake the assembling, Hebrews 10 and verse 25. But we encourage one another daily and so much more to see a day approaching. Because in that process, we take the Lord's Supper, remembering the Lord's death till he comes. And we march for the Lord every day, re-enlisted every morning in the army of the Lord. So those seven wonderful concepts can bring you to the Lord and keep you in the Lord. Will you pray with me? Father, help us to understand the picture in Joshua and the reality in Ephesians spiritually. Take these seven steps into our lives and live them every day for you, Father, that we can be spiritually successful. That one day when we meet you in judgment, you can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you a ruler over many things. Enter the joy of your Lord. In Christ's name. Amen. It doesn't get any better than that. May God bless you and keep you. Let's sing 658. There is much to do. Lord, send me. 658. There is much to do. There's work on every hand. Hark the cry for help comes ringing through the land. Jesus calls for reapers. I must act to be. What wilt thou, O Master, here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. Lord, send me. Lord, send me. Here am I, send me. Here am I, Lord, send me. Ready at thy bidding, Lord, send me. There are souls who linger on the brink of woe. Lord, I must not, cannot bear to let them go. Let me go and tell them, brother, turn and flee. Master, I would save them, here am I, send me. Here am I, Lord, send me. Lord, send me. Lord, send me. Bidding, Lord, send me. 726. We saw thee not. 726. We saw thee not when thou didst come to this poor world of sin and death, nor yet beheld thy cottage home. In that despised Nazareth, but we believe thy.
thy footsteps trod its streets and plains, thou Son of God. But we believe thy footsteps trod its streets and plains, thou Son of God. We saw thee not when lifted high amid that wild and savage crew. Nor heard we that imploring cry, Forgive them, they know not what they do. But we believe the deed was done That shook the earth and veiled the sun. But we believe the deed was done That shook the earth and veiled the sun. We gaze not in the open tomb Where once thy mangled body lay Nor saw thee in that upper room Nor met thee on the open way But we believe that angel said why seek the living with the dead? But we believe that angel said, Why seek the living with the dead? We walk not with the chosen few Who saw thee from the earth ascend, Who raised to heaven their wandering view, then low to earth all prostrate bend. But we believe that human eyes beheld that journey to the skies. But we believe that human eyes beheld that journey to the skies. As we continue our morning service, we have the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, to remember and think about Jesus, who lived on this earth as a man, and who was crucified as part of a glorious uh, plan that we are all beneficiaries of. Jesus is our Savior. I am missing you today, but I am encouraged by the sermons that Stephen has been given, the songs that we sing, and the prayers that we are praying. And I'm standing in an empty auditorium today. It's a gathering place for Christians, um, but although I cannot see you physically, I can see you in my heart and in my mind. We are all dispersed now. Uh, an event has pushed us all away. Uh, we are scared. We are concerned. And we want it to go away. To think on the Lord's Supper, and to a lesser extent our current plight, I want to read Matthew 26, 26 through 31. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. We are reliving an event that Jesus did 
the night before he was crucified. We break the bread, which represents his body, and we drink the fruit of the vine, which represents the blood he shed for us. Let us pray for the bread. Our dearly Father, we come to you at this time thanking you for the wonderful gift that you gave on our behalf that we cannot imagine the pain that you went through for us. As we partake of this bread, we pray that you will bless us and help us to understand and to meditate on the gift that you gave to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the fruit of the vine. Our dear Holy Father, we, we are so humbled by the gift that you gave for us that we could never repay you uh, for the sacrifice you gave, for the blood that spilled on our behalf, the pain and the suffering that you went through. We pray that we will examine ourselves at this time as we partake of the fruit of the vine, that we are worthy. Uh, to be called one of your children. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This concludes Lord's Supper. We are so blessed and uh, we have the opportunity and actually are commanded to return these blessings to the church. Giving is an obligation. 1 John 3.17 says that uh, how can you have God in your heart if you're prosperous but you know your brother isn't, and then you do nothing to help him. Giving is a privilege. Acts 20.35 says that it's better to give than to receive. Giving is an act of self-sacrifice. You don't want to give just so other people can see you. Uh, you don't want the left hand to know what the right hand is doing. Give, God knows. Giving is an expression of brotherly love. In uh, Romans 12, 13, it says contribute to the needs of the saints. Please remember to support the work of the church here at Myrtle Beach for the congregation here and for you. Let us pray. Our dear Holy Father, we are a blessed people. We have more than... Uh, we deserve, and we should count our blessings every day. And at this time, we ask that you will touch our hearts, that we will give and give generously to the work that's being done here at Myrtle Beach. We pray that you'll be with the elders as they make decisions on the use of these funds for the betterment of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's sing 134, Faith is a Victory, 134. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us.
us is love, our sword, the word of God. We tread the roads, the saints above, with shouts of triumph strut. By faith they, like a whirlwind's breath, swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. On every hand the foe we find drawn up in dread array, the tents of ease be left behind and onward to the fray. Salvation's helmet on each head with truth all girt about. The earth shall tremble neath the tread and echo with our shout. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him who overcomes the foe, right raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in hell. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the host of night. In Jesus' conquering name, faith is a victory, faith is a victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. Good evening, and want to thank each and every one of y'all for joining us. In these times of communication, I'd like to thank everybody involved at the Myrtle Beach Church of Christ for coming together and making this streaming possible. Psalms 118 tells us in verse 24, this is the day which the Lord hath made. Isn't it wonderful to know that during this time that we have options like this to be other's home or wherever we can just plug in or set up a laptop or a telephone. Times have really changed. We want to thank our visitors and thank the church family for tuning in and worshiping with us once again. Would you pray with me? Dismiss. Our Father in heaven, we approach your throne of grace and give thanks for you. Thanking you for all you have done. Thanking you that you have made everything. Salvation that is so simple to follow. Thanking you for giving us strength. And may we always, as your children, who love you and participate in what the Bible teaches, may we always wear our armory, the body of armor, in confidence. Avoiding the fiery darts that are cast by us in many different ways, even or opportunities of in our way. We've enjoyed singing these songs of melody from our hearts and having these prayers that we've had. And want to thank Brother Guy for this. Please guide, guard, and protect us in the upcoming days. We look forward to another time of worship. He asked you to forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin. For it's in your Son's loving name, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we do this in his name. Amen. <laughs>